So let's move on to social network analysis. What is social network analysis? Social network analysis is the process of investigating social structures through the use of networks and graph theory. It characterizes network structures in terms of nodes, where the nodes can represent individual actors, people, or things within the network, and ties, edges, and links, which represent the relationships or interactions between the nodes. The origins of social network analysis uh, lie within uh, the origins of social science itself. Uh, people such as Georg Samuel or Mill Dirkheim and Jacob Moreno were amongst the first scientists that created the field of sociology and came up with the uh, first uh, descriptions of what is now called social network analysis. So uh, initially, I mean, the, the initial idea was called a sociogram. Right, so this was basically a graph uh, where you could identify, which we could use to describe the relationships between individuals. Right? So this is on uh, research that had been conducted in schools and in different grades, and you could see how the kids would form different cliques and groups of friends. So the origins of social network analysis are in graph theory. Uh, so, graph theory is a study of graphs, which are mathematical structures used to model pairwise relations. And so, a graph is made up of vertices and nodes and, and points which are connected with each other. You can either have undirected graphs uh, or directed. So, in, in directed graphs, you need to specify uh, basically the direction of the interaction, all right? whereas in, in undirected graphs, this is not the case. Uh, so graph theory is a very big field in mathematics and it deals with many different things, some of which we don't care about. We don't care about trees in social network analysis, we don't care about isomorphism, colorics, etc. Uh, so social network analysis basically takes some elements of graph theory and applies it to social networks. So uh, social network analysis is recognized as a field and network analysis more generally. Uh, the reason being that uh, mainly due to the internet and the advances in, in telecommunications in the last uh, 30 years or so, networks are everywhere. Uh, so we have many different kinds of networks. So we have social media networks, friendship networks, disease, innovation, terrorism, economics, and these are just some of the examples. I mean, this is not an exhaustive list by any chance. So this is an, an example of network analysis conducted on politics and blogs. Right? So you can see that uh, the researchers in this case, they uh, crawled various blogs around the web and they clustered them according to their political affiliation, okay, with uh, Democrats on one side, Republicans on the other side, and neutral blogs in the middle. And so that's a cool example. Another cool example is in this link, uh, the global startup acquisitions. Right, so you can see that in the center you have USA and then you have some other prominent countries. Uh, so you see, for example, Great Britain and France and Canada and all the stuff, and then you have a periphery of smaller nodes and how all these are connected. It's very interesting. Another uh, interesting example is the world defense pact. Right, so you can see here. Uh, which country has defense back with what other country? You can clearly see that there are clusters of countries together, I mean, which makes sense. For example, it makes sense that the European countries have different parts with each other, the same with some African countries, etc. And you can visualize this network in a different way as well, which makes the clusters more uh, prominent. And you can see that in this case, uh, it's very easy to see that you have the European countries and the NATO treaty, and the Organization of American States, and then the com Economic community, community of Central African States, etc. I mean, everything is very nicely uh, clustered. So there are many other potential uses of social network analysis. Uh, so organizations might want to use SNA to identify and improve patterns of communication. Law enforcement might want to use uh, social network analysis to identify key players in criminal networks. And also social networking websites, such as Facebook, use social network analysis to recommend friends and groups. So, SNA is a soft science, okay, it's not hard science. Uh, it's inherently problematic, and the reason is that, uh, first of all, there are various forms and shapes that networks can take. So, there's not always a clear way to analyze them or visualize them. Also, there are many metrics. 
And really, there's no single uh, set of metrics which are the best one. Everything depends on the context. Okay, so there are many judgments that a researcher or an analyst has to do when they are performing social network analysis, and these uh, depend on the context and the task. So we're going to go through some basic uh, concepts around social network analysis. So first of all, I already mentioned uh, the difference between directed and undirected. Networks, uh, another very important concept which we'll cover it a lot is representation and visualization. Uh, it's not easy to create this kind of cool visualizations which we just saw earlier. Uh, so, there are whole libraries dedicated to that. And then, the two things which we're going to cover in the next part is metrics around things such as the node importance, the cohesion, the segmentation of the network. 